Welcome in everyone to the very first episode of the Guild of Icons. Uh, we have a good three year campaign ahead of us. Are we all excited? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The first thing, <laughs> yeah. The first thing, first, I, do, I, I do want to wish uh, Nick a happy birthday. The God, first of yeah, Happy birthday, Nick. Yeah, happy birthday, Nick. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> it's me uh, on Pixel. I was here the whole time. Yep. Who wants to do a recap? Uh, the campaign stopped. We finished. <laughs> Why are we here? Yeah, it's a good question, actually. Why are we here? Um, we're here because last time cover. there wasn't enough time to go, here's what your characters got up to. So we're going to do that. We're going to give nice cathartic send-offs to every character. It's going to be lovely. And if you don't like how it ended up, then you can go back to the previous episode where Gargol just walked off and disappeared for the rest of forever uh or if you really don't like how it ended you can go to the first episode of null and just stop there <laughs> i mean if you just stop really at the end don't of that. like good if you really don't like how it ended go to fanfiction.net write your own yeah yeah <laughs> yeah coffee shop au with uh dimples AO. and dimples shay dimples dimples alana alana and alana <laughs> it'd be great no, Someone that's write the worst that. Concept for Never seen this duo ever. and the Alana trio with Pearson Fiveson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they have only two ideas, and they're not. None of neither of them are good ideas. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's get started because if we don't start, we'll never finish. You all never finish. have just saved the world, and not just the world, the universe, and to some, the multiverse, and probably some other things as well. More importantly, you survived. And you return to the city of Karaki, looking a little better than it did before, but not a not a ton better. And you're greeted by crowds of cheering people. Once all of the congratulations are done, what do you reckon you'll do? Well, we should probably meet back up. That sounds like a good idea. So let's well, say you meet you know at a tavern, shall we? Why not? It's trite. It's uh, it's tried and tested. I avoided it basically for every intro. <laughs> In the Guild of Icons all the way. So it feels appropriate to do it for the final one. You meet in a tavern. <laughs> Which tavern? Who, uh, who, who owns this tavern? It's T-Bolt's tavern. Of course it is. Well, of course you, you take them to that tavern. You know the people there. Of You're course. less likely to be stabbed. And you can get cheap drinks. Also, uh, because it's Gargoyle's first time in the tavern, gar uh, as per the rule of Gargoyle, you're going to have to make a perception check. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, I didn't think I'd be rolling today, but here yeah. we are. Make me a perception check, please. <laughs> Shay does not have to make a perception check. And my character sheet in advance just in case. What's my perception? Not good. Twelve. Twelve. Okay. Um, I can't remember exactly what's on your inventory, but you've just lost an item from your inventory. It's a thieves bar. It, it just happens. <laughs> First time you arrive, someone's got to steal something from you. They can have the mirror made from two mirrors. Okay. <laughs> They've gotten that out of your pocket, this giant mirror. <laughs> They're walking off. Yeah. No, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And you, you all sit down. You get get around a round of drinks in. Uh, what, what what's everyone ordering? You know, what are your drinks? Ao Ao is a responsible public official who, unlike her predecessor, does not drink. She orders bourbon. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Responsible public official, which is why you're in two boss bar. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Granted, orders a. Uh, I'd imagine there's sort of like a uh, specific beer that's sort of made around Glarus that she orders. A beer made around Glarus, yeah. So the cold desert. Uh, I reckon. Gin and tonic. Well, I was going to say honey is quite a, quite often a, a desert sort of thing. You know, you get an Egyptian oh, honey yeah. and that sort of thing. So maybe it's a mead or some of some kind. Yeah. Wait, since there's cold temperatures that could allow you to freeze something, maybe it's scrumpy. Oh, that works. Yeah, so you get some scrumpy. Uh, Shay, for now, you're with them, but you can feel... You feel a sort of disconnect. Like, mm -hmm. there are more important things you should be doing. You're going to have to wait just a minute. This is the problem with my buttons. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting a bunch of notifications <laughs> in your brain. I, I will get back and do those in a few in a few seconds' time. I can wait. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're, you're receiving. You've received a lot of messages from uh, quite a 
an insistent tabaxi fighter um, by the name of uh, of Roscoe. And yeah, just he is incensed that there is injustice in the world and that you appear to have allowed that. You haven't allowed that, but... It, it's literally all your <laughs> fault. It's literally all my fault. Fantastic. Yeah. He's he's a devout believer in you, but he's also disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sending him divine powers because of this. No, he's this a fighter. I, no, he just oh, believes in you. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> Speaking of which, Shay probably has several things from grounded. He believes in how much he doesn't believe in you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. no, he's a devout follower. It's just he doesn't get divine power from that. Uh, yeah. Gargoyle out of the water. Church. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Gargoyle, so what were you saying? Uh, Gargoyle just have water. Of course, of course. Um, over two tables over, <laughs> the brass cannons are all sitting there. There you go. Typical nerd! <laughs> hey! They have had eight boots full of beer each. And yeah, they've been the, the moment you lot returned and the and the null zone collapsed, they've been celebrating non-stop. <laughs> Ao's but, going to slip slip over and uh, speak to T Bolt real quick. Okay. T Bolt I, I, raises an eyebrow at you. I, I, I feel like it's important for you to know, and this is of dire importance. I am not paying for their tab. I say pointing at the brass cannons. Do not let them do not let them convince you I'm paying. Well, that's awkward because they'd already said you were. Do you know how much they owe? How much? We're talking two hundred gold pieces. They why did why did you let them put it on my tab when I wasn't here? Because they said they were best friends with you. I'd seen them with you. That seemed to confirm things. And to be quite honest, they were ordering the top shelf stuff. I just figured they were celebrating your success. Huh, so I just got to see the prayer from A of Dunwich. <laughs> no <more I> <laughs> he, he, uh, what did I do to deserve this? Don't <laughs> and don't answer that. I know you have a list somewhere. Oh yes, quite the list. There's a tally. It's impressive. <laughs> there is actually a blackboard uh, on the back That's with various tallies. Um, most of them relate to particularly notable individuals and odds on whether someone can steal from them or, or not. I look how Ao has made a comprehensive list of all of her crimes just recently. Uh, you do I notice, have... actually, Shay, that your name is on that board. The odds are Impressive. astronomical. I was about to say... 200,000 to one. Yeah. It's impressive. First things first, Ao is going to pay her tab and then cut off the breast the breast cannons. <laughs> okay, uh, so you you pay you pay two hundred gold pieces and then cut off the breast cannons. Uh, Watch they, out! You they can come only up to the bar once every year. Tony comes up to the bar uh, as while you're up there and goes, "Hey, hey, hey, hey oh dumb witch! We've been having a great time. <laughs> Why don't you celebrate with us? Let's get a drink going, eh? Hey, Tibbs." Tibby, Tib, Tibby, Tib, Tib, Tibs. Let's have a drink. Let's have a drink with the two of us. And t Bolt raises an eyebrow very sharply indeed directly at you, Ao. They call me Mr. Tibbs. <laughs> well, 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 t well, uh, well, Toady, well, Tibbs, uh, I'm not paying for any more drinks tonight outside of my own. Oh, and come Ayo's on. And backing up. So you two have fun. But I left all my money back in Cantor. Ah! And you can you can hear as you, as you head back to the table, you can hear Toadie sort of begging with T-Bot for more alcohol. <laughs> and T-Bot's just standing there with a completely complete silence, just one eyebrow raised, just waiting for Toadie to finish. <sighs> so you're back at the table. You all have your drinks. What do you talk about? So I think that thing is actually gone. I yeah. I think the lich is gone, but what the lich was born from, what it what it is, I don't think that can ever be gone. That's worrying. How, like, how do you kill nothingness? Like, truly? Uh, I mean, with anything? We, yeah, with something. We killed it. 
Maybe that's ju- maybe that's just it. We just need to be. We can win by doing nothing. I wouldn't go that far. Uh, regardless, I don't think it's any of our problems anymore. I don't know. Something about it just... I feel like someone down the line is going to have to deal with that again. Even if it's in a different form. I mean, someone had to deal with it. We had to deal with it before us. I mean, you know, maybe it's just like cleaning your house. You have to keep doing it. Yeah. Uh, if it, cleaning if it your back, house. Yeah. If it comes back, it'll be different next time. There have been changes made that should ensure it doesn't happen again. At least not in the way it did just, just now. Speaking of, when that thing, whatever it was, asked us if we wanted anything different, how far-reaching do we think the consequences of those requests were? Hmm. Ao picks up her glass. She downs it and goes, I don't care. Not my problem. <laughs> Ao Watching refuses- you down a drink does get a cheer coming from the brass cannon's table, by the way. <laughs> Ao just, refuse- muscle memory. Ao absolutely refuses to to truly ponder the consequence, the far-reaching consequences. She she cannot handle it. You just want a world full of adventurers who might have to have tragic backstories to spur them on. You're telling me that AO Four Wishes cast Dunwich doesn't doesn't think about the consequences of her actions. I mean, is, that, I mean, is that the new epithet? Is that now the new epithet for AO Dunwich? AO Three Four Wishes cast Dunwich. If we want to be technical, five. I, if we count that last, if yeah, we count right, that fair. last one, we, we can count five that. Yeah. Cast. And no, I do not. I do not, in any sort of circumstance, think about the actions of my consequence. <laughs> or whatever. Or oh, the other way around. Meanwhile, at the polar opposite side of things, Shay is going to be sitting there, like sitting in changeling form at the moment, sort of like his hammer, and just mulling over the eternity that awaits and optimistically goes, I think we'll be okay. There's going to be changes. There's going to be ramifications. Consequences is a bit too small a word for it. But we'll be and fine. Isn't that a concept? Consequences is too small a word. Ugh. Ramifications is a longer word than cut. I know. No, it, 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 I, 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 get... I need to miss you. Oh, don't worry. Do not worry. You won't. <laughs> That's a good point, actually. What are we all doing now that it's done? Hmm. Oh, hang on a sec. I just need to do something. Grand, you just need in, in a blood pool. Uh, Grand is going to walk up to a bot. Back, back up to the bar. He's going to put some platinum pieces on the uh, counter and say, yeah, get them a couple of rounds. And then she's going to pat Toadie on the back and say, hey, don't drink too much. And she's accidentally going to um, use lay on hands to remove the drunkenness from him. Okay. Two things. First of all, one, that's great. Two, do you have any understanding of how much money you've just put down on the table? <laughs> <laughs> or alcohol exclusively. <laughs> It might pay for at least a round for the brass cannons. Yeah. <laughs> Are you aware of that uh, that meme from Arrested Development? Like, how much could a banana possibly cost? Ten, twenty dollars? Uh, uh, you Nick. put two hundred gold pieces on the table. No, I love it. We're getting rid of the brass cannons. Oh no, twenty. By, uh, yeah, you would put one yeah. or two. I thought you said ten or twenty. Platinum. Yeah. I was like, Nick. Whoa. Granted, only um, left uh, walk as an adult. Well, has only ever been outside walk as an Fair. adult. A pint is about an two silver pieces. Yeah. And, so... you know, adventure's <laughs> dealing gold pieces. She has yeah. no clue. I mean, how long that two platinum lasts really depends on how expensive they want their drinks. Well, it they've gone through time. all the top shelf liquor. That's, that's where your 200 gold pieces came from. Yeah, so, drinking the bar from the top down. Yeah, from top down. So this is probably a hundred pints minimum. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's a bit old. Um, this is a bit God stuff. I need to find. Who do you need? I think as well. Oh, I know the dickhead. Tell him to meet me in the bloody rose. In the bloody rose, you? Right. You want to make it like a like a proposition, or well, I mean, if you meet him in a brothel. The other thing it does. Oh, you want to. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Right. You want me to tell him that you're going to beat him up? Okay. Got it. I'll let him know. 
<laughs> you set that up pretty easily. I think you should have uh, been solving how to challenge him for like 20 minutes and maybe constructed a handmade glove. No. Don't be ridiculous. Uh, You'd make their own gloves. So, Gargoyle, what do you plan to do now? You're technically the outside here of the bunch of us. You, j- you just kind of got dragged along into our nonsense. Yeah, could you imagine? Oh, I suppose I will need to get back to Scaventry. Probably sooner rather than later. I'm not sure how prophetic that nightmare in the Null Zone was, but if there's any hint of truth in it, then we should probably lead an investigation into Crackbeak. Wait, you have one of those too? I thought it was just me. <laughs> Can I get I a group get perception, perception check, please? Ooh, group perception. Yeah. I get to be reminded that I'm shit at perception. I just want to know who spots this, basically. Seven. Yeah, I, I knew it wasn't going to be Gogo. My okay, passive seven. perception is 15. Five. Five, okay. AO so far. It's unlikely to be me. Okay, well, this is going to be even funnier if it's AO then. <laughs> Eleven. Eleven, okay, AO. Um, so, Sailor, who is here. Uh, has grabbed a drink and is uh, is drinking it uh, from the from the brass cannons table. Oh! <laughs> what do you do with that information, Ao Dunwich? <laughs> Corrupter of children. <laughs> She's six, I might add. You've given me a conundrum here, Nick. A real yeah. conundrum. Yeah. I think what the uh, cannons are drinking is probably going to do a bit more than corrupt a child. <laughs> You motion the harpies over so they can join in. Yeah. No, I I'm going to uh el- to elbow Gargo and go. Hey, I didn't know you were raising a cool child and point it out. <laughs> ah, da, 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 Gargo. <laughs> what? Uh, Gargo vortex warp sailor away from the. <laughs> the Vote safe for the child. Nat seventeen actually, but your just, your, your just safety the is higher than that. Yes, it's higher than that. <laughs> yeah. Boom. And yeah, the, the drink is just like spinning in the air as for a second in coyote time and then falls to the ground. Surely one of the cans catches this. No, they haven't got the reflexes anymore. <laughs> Grounded uh, telekinesis is the drink to avoid making a mess. Oh, okay, I was going to say, if the drink did hit the ground and smash, there would have been a loud cheer from the brass cans. Again, muscle memory. <laughs> but yeah, you, you telekinetic and stop it falling. Um, Gargoyle, what, what, what do you say? Uh, n- no, I, you really should stick to water. The drinks here aren't for, they're not good for a human who is as young as you. Gargoyle, it's Karaki. The mm. water here is probably not as safe as the alcohol. At least the alcohol's been distilled. I mean, you could have probably stopped it, human. Aren't you like 30? Why, why haven't you got one? Uh, yes, that is a good point. Uh, rounded a fork, you wouldn't happen to have any more of those potions left? I mean, I kind of found it, but I could try making it again. Boring. She wanders off. Ergol me. is going to extend a wing <laughs> to make sure that the path <laughs> to the brass cannons is blocked off. Okay, she's going to head towards the thieves and thugs and murderers and brigands that otherwise fill out this pub. <laughs> well, she can take those on. Yeah. Don't, she, don't worry. A- Ale was raised around these people. It's fine. She goes and sits with a half orc bard who is insistent on playing uh, Thunderwall. Well, it was a good campaign, buddy. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> wait, you get wait, the feeling that it... unless you were in the Null Zone, that kid's probably safe with Rosette the Blasting. But, but, but wait, is, is, is he casting the song at his feet? <laughs> it's the only way, it, the the only way he knows how. The there is only one Rosette in this universe because the okay. wish is likely <laughs> didn't happen. Anyway... <laughs> You finish you finish your drinks and you go your separate ways for a little bit. The very first thing that we will we will sort out is the Karakian election. <laughs> it's time. So it's politics time. Ayo, how well do you think you did as a as an electioneer? Going by what by, by what was said at the debate, Ayo Dunwich absolutely followed up on her on her singular giant promise. It's true. That People come, are pretty that happy. Come about the that. Di- 
that come the day of the election, the orb would no longer be there. Okay, here's how we're going to do it. I want you to give me a reason why people should vote for you. For every reason you give me, I'm going to roll a D100 and add that to your, your tally of votes. Break a thousand you, and then you win the election. I'll give you a reason. There's another orb in Cracky, the Mindbreaker orb, and Ao has it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let, let's start with the big one. Ao was able to save the city, the world, and the universe. Okay, I'll give you two for that one. That's pretty good. So, 71 and 30. For a total of 100. 101 so far. 899 to go. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's go through her various deeds. Uh, one, she was able to very successfully expand the guild into a large franchise rather than just five or ten people in a rundown shack. Yep, the Karaki Republicans are going to like that. <laughs> 92 on that one. Uh, so that puts you at 193 now. Excellent. Uh, Ao Dunwich was able to very, very quickly and easily solve the uh, crisis of the disappearing corpses. Very good point. 32 on that one. That brings you to 224. You know, that makes sense. I know for a fact, thanks to, thanks to my nightmare world, that Ton is a Dupree supporter. <laughs> he does. He does. He does love a, a Dupree, yeah. Improving the profitability of the Guild of Icons only puts more money in Dunwich's pocket. You should remember this when you are voting. <laughs> You're I, at twenty two percent. I have, a, I have, a, I have oh, reason. Go on. I had the witch has destroyed it before and she'll do us again. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, go on. Yeah. Uh fourteen, okay. I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only 14 people right. here Two, AO Dunwich 236 yeah. <laughs> okay uh, sorry continue AO Dunwich knows what happened to the previous uh, holder of her position and she won't dare um, step out of line <laughs> it's all frets but not all of them from AO okay <laughs> it's only the 2 AO instead that's an 83 um, that's an 83 so that brings you to 319 okay uh, let's go to the next big one under A.O. Dunwich's repertoire. Uh, A.O. Dunwich was able to establish a foothold in the library, bolstering the city's defenses. Okay, 839. Roll, 339, roll better, man. Not 839. Roll uh, A.O. was able to very successfully uh, was able to very successfully go and secure powerful artifacts for the, for, for the safety of the city of Piraki. Sure. 51. That's 409. Mm -hmm. Got kids 40 interested in adventuring. Run successful Did youth program. <laughs> successful youth program. Uh, you you I can go I, with that if you want. I don't want to go with that. Please. <laughs> Roll it, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> You've got in Altrari canvassing on the streets, except he's hiding behind <laughs> posters. Uh, 45. <laughs> So that's okay. 454. You're almost uh, halfway there to winning the election. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ao, do Ao does have a re a a good good rapport with people from before she was an elected uh, a quote unquote elected official. She has a lot. Of, she has a lot of pe uh, connections in the underground. I'm sure those people would like to vote for her. Ah, uh, bribery. I'll give you two. Not of that yet. For that, I, I have think. not gotten to that. Yes, I thought it was legitimate. And. 90. So 45 and 90 is 135 added on to 491. Why didn't I just make these d10s? This would have been so much easier for me. 491 uh, plus 139 is um, it's uh, 500, uh, 630. 630. Uh, she was able to very thoroughly tra trounce uh, Amos Davis Dupree in a public debate after he spent so long trashing her. It, That's true. I'll give you two for that. That was a that was a it was a good debate. I want debate. It on record that that victory was subjective, and if the people of Karaki cared about Karaki and its continued protection, they'd be voting Dupree. Twice, <laughs> surely, at this juncture as well. Ninety-three and people, seventy for that one. That's, that's some good rolls. You're seven nine three. 
two hundred and seven away. Based on a, a, a can or not count as well against. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't in really know case, that much. In this case, uh, the next thing I'll probably bring up is the fact that she w that she was brought into this position thanks to the recommendation and word of a pre-established politician that people trust, the spy master. Okay, you got the spy master on your side sometimes, so I'll give you I'll give you one for that. Uh, ooh, that is 96. Oh, what are we at? 889. Uh, we can oh. get one from Lausanne. Uh, Ayo brought back the person who gave her her arm back. Uh, will Lisa and vote for you? Yeah. Only 110 more to go. 110 okay. more to go. Granny can personally testify uh, she helped take care of her children while she was at work. Okay, She's a woman you're getting the family values side coming. Yep. Okay. Just getting photo ops of holding some baby harpies. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's only going to be uh, 30, I'm afraid. It was never doing a, a holding baby publicity stunt again. <laughs> you taught, uh, you it, taught them all some new words that day. You're doing this uh, photo it, op, you're holding up, <laughs> you're holding up the, the harpy and it just goes, fuck! <laughs> I didn't tell that she was holding it upside down. Yeah. Okay, uh... Ao Dunwich was the person who for, who initially proposed the uh, the temporary encampment system for the refugees of Silver Street, All which right. was then later expanded as the orb was expanded. She worked. She she proposed working with the Church of Marion to set that up. Sixty four. You need sixteen more votes. Sixteen one six. Yep. You're at nine eight four now. Ao Dunwich it left the Guild of Icons in the uh, capable hands of an arsonist. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, at the, I mean, if it's only sixteen votes, then that's the brass cannons. Uh, I mean, I just, AO I'm going to do, I'm going to do the responsible politician three, politician thing, and definitely work in some bribes here and there. Okay, how much are you paying per vote? <laughs> oh, I, I, I just, I need sixteen. You said one six. You need sixteen more votes. Can the god of justice genuinely vote for Ao Dunn? <laughs> I mean, we'll get into why that might be something that works in a bit, but I've got an idea why it might be okay now, but won't be okay later. Uh, <laughs> give me a moment to do some math. I and mean, we all know why it won't be okay later. The stories only get worse. I mean, I could, I could, th I could throw forty-five gold per person for each of those vote votes. Forty-five gold per person will buy you sixteen more votes, getting you to a thousand. <laughs> you, uh, that's a very expensive poke game. You win the election. You return as low marshal, as the head of the Guild of Icons. Uh, and now that there are a lot of people signing up to be adventurers, uh, adventurers, you are able to basically sleep on a bed of money in the next few oh, years. Concerned, I don't. Oh, oh. That is unfair, and you will all regret the decision that you have made. <laughs> you will be coming crawling back to me when Aeldum, which leaves this town, destitute. Uh, for the other results, most of the incumbents kept their place. There were a couple of uh, new roles that had to be filled because some people died. Um, the yeah, we need a uh, new high and low pursers. Yeah, the high purser is one Dalian Worms. The low purser uh, is Ton Blackcavern. Really, Ton? He's good with money. I mean, I suppose. I just, I just didn't see the politician in him. He's a union leader. He, he has to be a politician. <laughs> yeah, I'm, pr I'm proud of him. Hmm. He did well. Right. With the election settled, we'll, s we'll skip to grounded. Who is waiting in the bloody rose for Darren Keswell? <laughs> By the way, if you need any magical tinkering to have been done to anything, assume that it's been done. Okay. And Darren walks in looking a little confused, a little bit sheepish, hands his weapons at the door, as you have to every time you go into the bloody rose, and steps inside and goes up to uh, Nice Scarlet and says, Excuse me, I'm. I was meant to meet someone here. She says, oh yeah, we get that a lot. Um, take a seat. I'll find who you're looking for. Do you know her name? Or his name? Or their name? Uh, grounded? Or I don't really know what this is about. I just... Someone threw a brick through my window? 
And after a while, Nice Scarlet comes over to you and relays all this information to you. It's amazing how, in so far as ground, it's, this is one of the lesser vandalized windows. <laughs> Grounded, what do you do? He's sat on a table. Well, sat on a chair, not on a table. That would be weird. <laughs> yeah, Grounded is going to walk up and sit on the table. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, okay. Patch on the table. She was raised by birds. Uh, are you the one? Grounded. Who... Right. Grounded, Joy. Walk. Okay. Did you throw the brick through my window? I can honestly say I didn't. Right. Do you know who did? Not specifically, no. I'll be honest with you. In Ocari, go around breaking windows. I am a member of the constabulary here, you know. Yep. I, I, I don't That's wanna, what I want to speak to you about. I don't want to surprise you or anything, but throwing bricks through cops' windows is not a smart idea. Yeah, about that. A few months ago. Ring any bells? Not at all. Oh. Um, let me tell you. Do you know who I am? No. The only yep. one who got any fame from this is Ao and Shay. <laughs> I'm sorry, you got to give me some slack here. I see a lot of weird people. Mm. Adventurers trying to beat up some shop owners, just selling them stuff instead of giving it away to for free. You go and arrest them, you spend a night in the clink, you usually escape, you usually kill a couple of guards in the process. Oh, let me put it this way. Do you know Ao Dunwich? Personally, no. Obviously, I have no other. I do. Voted against her, of course. Like any of course smart did, person. Officer. Of course you did, officer. Of course you did. Yeah. Let me refresh your memory. About six months ago, I was making reasonable inquiries, trying to follow up on... Uh, well, oddly enough, I was actually looking for someone who uh, was directly related to the um, unpleasantness that I was dealt with not too recently. You're going to have to narrow it down. There's been a lot of unpleasantness. Let me... Re how many orange tieflings do you know who've been inside the Null Zone? None. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. Sorry, you want me to be your friend or something? I mean, if you do, don't throw no. bricks from a bloody window. Okay. Now look. Six months ago, I was making inquiries related to dealing with that. And all of a sudden, I was um, followed by a guard. He did not have anything to charge me with, but, but promptly decided to ban me from the summer district. Rainy bells? I mean, probably. Did you look like a troublemaker? Do I look like a troublemaker to you? You are sat on the table. Someone threw a brick through my window. Mm. Point is, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. Are you threatening an officer of the law? Mm. No. Mm. Okay. So, e either I can speak to my boss, eh? Or we can solve this in the arena. What do you think? Let's go for the arena then. I don't like any of this. He goes back to the door to get his weapons. Ape, bup, bup, bup. Good old fisty cuffs. All right, fine. Don't you have any honor? Don't you? Oh yeah, that's why we're doing this. That's why you put a brick through my window, isn't it? He goes down to get ready. Uh, and after about half an hour, you're getting ready in the other room. You hear an announcement announcing an impromptu fight. Uh, and that people can place their bets between a member of the law and a member of the Guild of Icons. And there is a flurry of betting, and then the doors are unlocked to the arena, and you're free to enter. Hey, I step in. As as you do, if you look if you look up to, to the audience, you can see Ao and the brass cannons there. <laughs> they against, and they bet against me, didn't they? Uh, Ao, uh, Ao may have bet against you, but the brass cannons would absolutely bet for you. Ao, no, I what your grapple score is. Oh no, worry not. A uh, Ao, uh, Ao's not betting. Ao's just here, just here to liven up the crowd. Darren Keswell comes out wearing full plate. He said, "You said huh. no weapons." I said, "No weapons." And a cheer goes up from the crowd. Roll initiative, please. How hard can the AC of a um, fully armoured guardsman be? Yeah, exactly. Uh, at least 18. Yeah, plate mail's 18, I believe. Mm hmm. Ah, uh, that's the 14. Darren got a 15. Well then. Launches in with right hook, left hook, uppercut. Natural 20. 25. 14. Uh, so. 14 does not hit. You take. <laughs> 10 points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, 10 points on a crit? Unarmed mm, strikes this... don't have any damage dice associated. Oh, this 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 poor guard. 
Unless you've got claws, you're a monk. Yeah, it, uh, those have damage dice and they mm. can crit and double the dice, but these don't. Mm. That's, his, that's his turn. He's looking pretty happy about it, though. Delivers those jabs to you. You dodge one of them, but yeah. the other two hit hard. Can I steady aim one of them? You can absolutely steady aim. And not steady aim. Um, uncanny dodge one of oh, them. Oh, yeah, you can uncanny dodge. Yeah, um, so reduce one of the fives to two. Grounded uh, just looks for a moment, looks at him. You know, just tanks the blows, smiles, and goes for a punch square in the face. Okay. Okay, I believe this is uh, just plush my uh, strength modifier, or do I get my proficiency bonus as well? Uh, I think everyone's proficient in unarmed strikes, so go for it. I can't remember. I played amongst so long, which are explicitly proficient in unarmed strikes, but I'm pretty oh, yeah. sure everyone is. I mean, okay. if you've had your hands all your life. Exactly. That's true. Okay. Remind me, what do I get as a bonus for 29 strength? Lots. <laughs> uh, go for 14. it's probably plus 7 plus your proficiency modifier, which would be plus 11. Okay, plus 11. It's me actually 29. That, but that hits. Uh, so you deal your strength modifier and damage, which is okay. 7. Plus, hmm, I don't think you can sneak attack on much. Nope, it's not a finesse. Mm. Weapon. Tragic, really. Mm. Oh, wait, what's your strength score? Uh, 29. Uh, that would be a plus 9, not a plus 7. Plus 9 takes 9 okay. damage. Oh, in that case, that's comes a... comes his corner of his mouth, and he wipes it off his face. He goes, you made me bleed. Yep. How's the armor? Hot's clean? You stupid old girl. Pulls from back a dagger. There are gasps in the arena. <laughs> the God of Justice has a problem with this right now. <laughs> Shay, how are you going to intercede? I'm assuming I have access to a huge range of spell casting that I would not normally be permitted as you know, a paladin. Yeah, consider yourself ninth level, uh, either cleric or par paladin spell lists. Cool. Um, is heat metal in those spell lists? I believe heat metal is on, at the very least, paladin. Uh, certainly Cleric of the Forge would have it. So, yeah, you've probably got heat metal. And that seems like an appropriate spell at this point anyway. It does, doesn't it? Now, the question is, do I want to apply it to the dagger he's holding or the armor he's wearing? <laughs> Which would be the just approach here? Uh, the Inner's Pit grounded. I think the just approach would be the air dagger. There we go. It just gets superheated very, very quickly. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, he's probably melting his hand at this juncture, I think. Like, to that point, just flash yeah. melts I'm, in his I'm hand. saying he doesn't get a save. Uh, it melts in his hand and he drops it. And, ah, ah, ah. it takes, let's say, 98 uh, fire damage. That wasn't very just of you, you know? Whoa, that's quite spicy. Uh, 31. 39. 49 fire damage. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ah, need to do that fuck. much to him. <laughs> I assume you cast it with a ninth level spell slot. I was going to think just enough to make him drop it, but you it know. made him drop it. Did a third of his hit points all in one go. That's the only I'm going to have in this fight. Just so you're clear. <laughs> so you've okay. got magic, have you? I didn't do anything. Yeah, right. Launches in again. Left, right, uppercut. Uh, that's a natural 2, that's a natural 18, which will probably hit. And that's a natural 4. Yeah. So, only one hit this time. This time it's the uppercut straight oh. to the jaw. Uh, so you take 5 points, which again you can uncanny dodge. Uncanny dodge. Yep. yep. So you take 2 points right. of damage, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try and initiate a grapple. Okay. And can uh, I basically try and squeeze his armor to sort of uh, dent the joints and make it hard for him to move? Sure. Roll a disadvantage, though. Okay, this is rolling a grapple with disadvantage. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think you normally have advantage on those, so you can roll normal. You have to beat a 27, grounded. Okay. Wait, let me just recalculate my athletic. Right, um, so it'll yeah, be the plus worst part 9 plus 8, so plus 17. So you need to roll a 10 or higher to beat a 27. Yeah. You have to be to 27. That is not a hard thing for Gander Four to do. No, indeed. Okay, I've got plus 17, so this is basically I need to roll above 10. Yep. I rolled a 19. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you grab him and you crush the plate armor 
with your your bear's strength uh incredible i'm going to say that that has reduced his ac by four you have a do you have a second attack no you don't have a second attack no very but that's reduced his ac by four which is great he's now still grappled um and he's going to rip off a chunk of his plate mail and he's going to try and batter you with it Hmm. okay three attacks effectively with a club unnatural 20 27 and 26 there's all hits okay this actually does damage this time right Alan, um, can he dodge the highest okay so the highest is 11 going down to 5 7 plus 7 so and then another 14 damage after that okay 19 total goes let go of me witch okay, your guess <sighs> what you just call me a witch you did magic I did no such thing hmm I saw it I felt it again you're cheating in a you're cheating in a matter of honor there is a god of justice you know you have no honor you put brick through my window to get me here I was upholding the I... law god of justice should want what I want law okay how about we make a deal then let's leave it up to the god of justice drop the metal <laughs> act of fists no <laughs> oh, I, 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 cool. I am very happy he said that Brandon what are you doing it is still your turn yep steady aim punch to the face alright go for it uh, 21 to hit that hits uh, so that yep. does another 9 points of damage bloodied you can still concede you know that's my go bam 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 to the face with this chunk uh, of metal hey, uh, yep. question, can I do something before he starts attacking absolutely go for it can I get a DC 17 wisdom saving throw? Ho, 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 ho. He's not very good at those. Ooh, that's a 12. Here, I Excellent. Uh, cool. Uh, Ao in the middle of the crowd of cheering brass cannons, cast a use the wand binding to cast hold person on him for a single round. Oh, he goes. He goes to hit you, and it's like an inch from your face. And he, uh, what are you doing to me? Yeah. That's his turn. <laughs> Wrong cheekbones. Grounded, if you take a strike sure. right now, uh, you have advantage, and it is an automatic critical hit if you hit. But bear in mind, it doesn't do double unless you use a weapon. Ow, but I don't really want to use a weapon because it goes against the spirit of the thing. It does, doesn't it? <clears throat> I use an item interaction just to pull the uh, piece of armor out of his hand before I punch him. Yeah, he's got a pretty good grip, though. I'll need an athletics check. Okay. Like, you're sort of going against, like, locked hand. Okay, that is 18 plus. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> okay. I you 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 got plus 17. It, that'll do it. <laughs> yeah, you rip that bit of metal from Darren Kessel's hands, and he's just like, Argh! with his anger. It's his yep. turn. Whole person drops, and he sinks to his knees goes you you haven't seen the last of me but i know what's good for me i concede he shouts and he walks out subtle spell grease <laughs> 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 and he walks out and goes Whoop, and lands on his ass and everyone is laughing the brass cannons particularly like dimbles almost falls in that's how hard he's laughing <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is pointing and laughing, and he walks away. His face is bright red. And he feels it so ashamed. It would have been like this if he just played fair. And he's shouting, You saw it! You saw it, witchcraft! <laughs> and he's walking out. <laughs> 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 oh, Whoop! On his ass again. <laughs> <laughs> and again more laughter raucous laughter toady collapses onto the ground with laughter like he's holding his chest he's in pain from how much he's laughing at this uh, i need to stress that with this time past they have not stopped drinking in this time <laughs> they've been casting okay. lesser and greater restoration to keep their livers from failing so that they can continue to drink uh Aaron is going to hop down into the arena as she has done before, recklessly before. Yep. 
Soul spell, spell grease by any chance, Gargoyle? <laughs> I've only got two meta magic cards. Okay. <laughs> I am going to walk up to Grounded, shake her hand on a congratulations, and hand her a piece of paper. What's in the piece of paper? It's an officially signed document uh, that unbans her from the Summer District. Yes. Yay, finally. Yay. Okay. And mask paper. No. Oh. <laughs> What's favor? I could use a secretary. No, Sam. I don't have the perfect hand at all. <laughs> it, it'd be funny, but no. It would cause more issues down the line. Oh, uh, yeah. Probably shouldn't actually have a guard who's got a deadly grudge against me uh, in charge of my paperwork. Probably not. In fact, the I think best. that was the problem in the first place. Okay, we're going to cut to Gargoyle. Gargoyle, you take Sailor to Scaventry. It's, it's a long journey. And you, you kind of get the, this idea in your head that it would be really good if that journey was a lot shorter. Um, maybe that'll be a project you work on later. But once you get there, you settle in, you go and say hello to your parents who are extremely pleased to see you. Are very surprised to see that you appear to have a human daughter. Oh, honey, welcome back home. Who's No, that? no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing the voice. I'm not doing it. What do you mean, Gargoyle? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not Gargoyle. I don't... It's like, well, no, I, that I, was I, a nightmare. Like, not... Canonically a nightmare. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes you, don't, you don't have to clear armor as your, as your father. <laughs> they... They they croon over you. They, they 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 coo almost like doves in how happy they are to see you again. Also probably surprised to see him... Uh, well, grounded might have fixed the aging thing, but yeah. he's covered in crystals. Yeah, they are surprised about that. Like, <laughs> is it an infection? Or it, it's not I... dangerous, is it, honey? No. <laughs> I'm doing the voice. Oh, I'm doing the voice. You're getting the voice. <laughs> and uh, every tiefling sounds like this. That's. <laughs> Everyone okay. sounds like the first character we meet who was that thing. <laughs> Not everyone, but this is particularly your mother, so... Gargoyle. Who do you think you got it from? After a, after a bit, things have calmed down a little bit. Um, Sailor is living in your old room with you. You've got two cots, essentially. Not like baby cots. Small single beds. And um, after a while, she asks you and goes, Will I grow feps? What do you mean? Well, like you. And like everyone else here. Well, no. Uh, your parents are probably out there s somewhere. We just need to find them. Yeah, but what if we don't? Well, there's always the possibility we do. I mean, there hasn't been any clues yet, but if the world did change, then something would have had to have changed that we should be able to notice. Uh, family appearing out of nowhere, but everyone else would remember. Over the next few days, you regularly wake up in the, I say wake up in the middle of the night. You're nocturnal. Uh, you're an owl. Um, you regularly wake up in the middle of the day <laughs> uh, to find that Sailor is having nightmares quite often, crying in her sleep. Hey. Hey, you okay? Uh, I keep having this same scary dream. And she, like, just presses herself against your wing. It's not real, is it? The the eyes in the darkness? No. Well, um, it's... When we were in the null zone, I made a wish. A wish that changed lots of things and you know that much but I when I asked if you could be human I wasn't thinking about a family I was just thinking about keeping you safe what was I before if I wasn't human I remember when uh, Grounded told you that you were a beholder yeah but I thought she meant, like, you know, 
the same. Beauty, it's in the eye of the beholder. No. What's a beholder? I... Correct. I don't know. (laughs) 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 So, when I made that wish, I... Beholders are not from here, not from this plane. They're from the far planes. And they're either created there in ways that I can't imagine, or they're created from the dreams of other beholders. If I was dreaming of something and I was a beholder, am I going to make that thing? Not anymore. Okay. Thank you, Gargoyle. Gargoyle uh, tucks Sayla back in, but can't get back to sleep himself and just looks out the window at the sun as it's beginning to set and sits down at his work table and starts drawing up some more schematics on a gate. Mm. Okay. As you're drawing, you hear a quiet murmur from Sailor. Uh, Just sort of comfy, mid-sleep sort of murmur. And she says, I love you, Dad, and falls asleep. We are going to cut to Shay. Shay, you find yourself... How do you move as a god? I think at the moment I'm starting to flick between places. Yeah. Previously I've been walking, but as as everything's starting to bubble out from the retcon to be making, I imagine I'm starting to become more and more divine as it goes on. And I'm yep. starting to do the flickering through and starting to become omniscient. But in a very limited, I want to be here and now I'm here. Hmm more jumps at the moment and now it's just very much like I am now halfway across the city and didn't realise it was going to be. I imagine yeah. in a few weeks it's going to be I'm halfway across the world or in more places at once. And a few but weeks do I'm probably indeed sitting pass. somewhere. I'm you are sat somewhere. Meditate somewhere. You're sat on a small hillock in a dense forest and you're looking at I suppose it's, it's not really much more than a hole in the ground. It's a moss covered stone structure that descends into the, into the darkness. You're not sure why you're here. You just ended up looking at it. Why don't you get the thing a cobalt fell down here? <laughs> 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 okay. I'm here for a reason then. And, you know, let's trek, trek my way down. See if I'm my side. Yeah. I imagine I've also manifested the Shimmer Scale place at this point as well. Yeah. Yeah. You are in a sparkling and fine raiment of shimmer scale plate. Zephos uh, is glowing with radiant energy at your side. Uh, it says in your head, Hey, old girl, what adventure is this, huh? We'll find out, I guess. Hmm. Well, Hole in the ground, I hope some which I don't know anything about. Well, maybe it's full of goblins or something. Well, let's go scaring. And you step through and you walk into the darkness. Yep. You have true sight. So you can see perfectly fine in the dark. And I'm assuming I'm going to the library, though, if it's this, if it's this deep hole in the ground, right? It's an assumption you can make. The stone starts to give away, not to marble, which would be the library. Library is mm-hmm. a constant maze of marble, but to brass and cogs. And they are constantly tick, tick, ticking away and whirring and making all sorts of noises, and that's echoing around you. As you delve deeper into this tunnel, and you, this is new. yeah, this is new. This is something you've never seen before, and you enter a an antechamber that is huge, deep underground. You've probably walked 200, 300 feet uh, at a forty-five degree angle downstairs to get to this, and it's again more and more cogs. These huge brass cogs whirring around, but now there are tubes of glass with liquid in bubbling array um, all around green liquid and uh, blue liquids bubbling around and these huge vats lining the wall and you look on and you can see further down there's another room and another room and another room all like this and the vats are all full of this sort of green liquid and when you get closer to any of them you can see a figure suspended in them size of well that's the interesting thing they're all different sizes 
Some are halflings, some gnomes, goblins, elves, orcs, furbolgs, anything. What am I looking at here? You've never seen I... this before at all, but you can make me an arcana check, please. And you can add plus 10 to it. I mean, that's just going to be adding 10 to it then. Yeah. That's add 21. 21. So your divine sense sort of echoes out uh, and you get a feel for what is here. These are humanoids, but there is no spark. These are not connected. There, there's no life in them <laughs> at all. It's like these have been shaped no from clay. Yeah, no presence of life ever in them. Never, never before has there been a presence of life. They're not undead either. Oh. Like, undead don't have a spark either, but they're very clearly used to. I have a quick thought on this one. Is there... Damn, I just remember what form I was in. It's a gnome, wasn't he? He was a halfling. Halfling. There is a halfling set of corpses here, but yes. I'm wondering if, if any of them look vaguely familiar. It's hard to see through the, the glass. But if you look closely, you can see a few halflings that look like Arafra for whatever. And in fact, actually, as you start looking further and further, there's a certain resemblance to him in all of these vats. Furbolg with Merifrif Winifrif's signature nose, which always has a little chunk missing from the top. Uh, if he's any type of smart, he would have rigged something to notify when anyone went into here, divine being or no. Let's keep going. Let's see what's at the end of this of this pile of that, of sure. this pile of simulacra. You go through room after room after room, and you're probably counting something like a thousand copies of Merifrif Winifrif as you go along. You're having to estimate there's so many around you, but about a thousand probably is accurate. And you get to the end and you find a great machine of brass and glass that is slowly working away at creating new copies. And this thing is gargantuan. It is probably 200 feet across and 400 up. Deep underground, this machine whirs, constantly creating new Merifrif Winifrifs. God damn it, Merifrif. That the entire purpose of this entire facility is just to make new things for him to jump into when he dies. Yeah. Thousands of them. Thousands of them. The man's insane. I have a horribly evil thought in my mind at this juncture as a player mm. and it's almost a good idea almost a good idea how much is it in my power to bring all of these a soul at once for people who kind of deserve it oh you can try that if you'd like i'm thinking people whose time got cut short unjustly Floating out there in the etheric pools at the moment. Just sort of okay. floating through the afterlife and going, yeah, you could do it a second chance. This is very cool. I'm going to say it's very, very difficult. And the reason Fine. it's very difficult is because, well, you'll find out actually, there is a reason, and I'll tell you in a sec. If you fail, I'm sure. you can succeed. You will have plus 10 to this plus your religion modifier. This is joys of playing a plus zero intelligence character. <laughs> Where did all my proficiency ghosts go? Uh, DC so 35. Uh, I'm not going to ever pass that. It's maximum I could have rolled it was, tw was um, 20 and I got a 19. So, so you get this 29. idea and you try to bring... That was pretty close. You try to bring... Oh yeah, like one blow. I could, could, well, I could have got max. Try to bring these souls in and as that happens, you feel this sharp pain in your head. Like a mm. mind spike. And with it, knowledge of a name, a name you've never heard before, an alien mind, ordered, controlled, and you hear it whispering in your head, the machine. Go back to the machine made of brass and glass that's manufacturing Merifis, hmm. and try to focus on the voice that screamed at me saying the machine and look at it and try and focus on trying to work out what it's saying about said machine. You hear it again in your head, this time sounding like first very slow you hear a tick that happens rhythmically like a tick of a clock and it speeds up and speeds up and speeds up and suddenly gains in pitch until it modulates like a voice and it says I am your machine god 
Bugs and Latos don't normally work like this. I'm a new exception. Barkborn, very weird. Most of the gods of Atos are two sides of a similar coin. You're not that either, though, are you? Although if you are, I dread to see what your opposite is. <laughs> uh, for those who remember the planning stream, like some four years ago, there was one extra spoilers. god. <laughs> yeah, well, that would be spoilers. That would be spoilers. You are faced with the machine god, and the machine god appears to not want to answer your questions. Fine then. Keep your secrets. I have at least two leads on who can answer this. Mm. You have leads. You have a feeling that while a gods can stop other gods pretty easily from meddling in their affairs, like you could stop anyone from meddling with justice. Yeah. But gods can't actually stop adventurers so much. Very good fun in that. Oh, exactly. You might need to go and find someone who's willing to do a job. Amped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and yeah, you leave. Um, before we go on a break, we have one more thing. Grounded. You're sat in a. Well, when you actually, when you tell me, oh, if yeah. you were taking someone out on a date, where would you go? I'd grounded go on a date. Probably somewhere quite high up. Okay, just in case you need to push them off or what? <laughs> no, it just feels more comfortable at heights. Okay. Like maybe, you know, like a picnic on top of um, like a really high landmark, I guess. You okay. have a carpet. Grounded famous at dealing with rejection well. You take Belden Potts to the bridge between Karaki and Garaki, the broken, sundered bridge, which is the highest point, and... You both sit there on the edge with your legs dangling over, watching the boat sail underneath you hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of feet below. And you've made a picnic and you sit there and Belden asks you a few questions, gets out a little notebook, says, you know, force of habit, and just asks a few questions about you, about your, your life and what you've done. He says, so of all the things you've done, what would you say you're most proud of? Well... Sections um, seven, eight, three to um, seven, eight, three, five of uh, the uh, walk spire. That's all my work. I'm very proud of that. Oh, right. So, not any of the adventuring or anything? Oh, uh, well, you know, that's just a job, you know. I came here to you know, sort of, uh, <laughs> you know, just uh, help out back there and. Uh, no, just sort of, uh, you know, escalates a bit. Oh, I, I guess I just thought that would be the more interesting thing. But okay, yeah, no, that's it's nice that you're proud of it. Yeah, um, and she pulls out a bottle of wine from a picnic anchor. You want a glass? Yeah, sure. It's nice up here, isn't it? You can almost forget everything that's going on behind you. Yeah, I mean, it's still there though. <laughs> <laughs> She's not going to push her off. Stop it. <laughs> Do you come up here often to the summer district? Well, yeah, I say, of course you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, until recently, I was kind of banned, so yeah, quite a bit. Oh, why were you banned? Like, I bet that's a really interesting story. She licks the mm -hmm. nib of a pen. No, I was just trying to do some research at the library and a uh, guard started following me around and just couldn't find anything to charge me with, so he just issued me a ban. You know what I like about you, Grounded? You're not like other adventurers. And don't take this oh. the wrong way, but it's because you're boring. Hmm? I said don't take it the wrong really? way. I mean, like, your, the, your favourite thing isn't cutting off the head of a dragon or, like, sinking a ship full of pirates or saving a village. It's, you know, just a bit of building work. Like the rest of us, it's oh, yeah. approachable is maybe a better word. Yeah, that's good because they never actually let me near the drill at home. Why wouldn't they let you near the drill? Uh, it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Uh, that's that's. I'm sure that's a funny story I'll hear sometime. She leans against you, says, "What do you think will be the next thing that happens to this city? Something's always going on." I don't know. Uh, new a uh, new building project maybe. Hmm. Maybe you know. Maybe uh. Maybe you know. Maybe it's just going to be the boring stuff. You know, 
the economy grows, people rebuild, and nothing happens. I could handle the boring stuff for a bit. I'd like that. <laughs> and cheats a few more things, sits there with you, and then gets to her feet and says, This was nice. It was nice to get away from work for a bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Same. Yeah. I'll have to do this again sometime and maybe bring some more friends. And give me insight, please, Grandma. Okay. Well, just enough. It was only a DC 10. You get the feeling that she didn't know this was a date. <laughs> just, hmm. And you, you sort of like, you're looking at the wine, at the food, at the blanket, at the view, and you're like, how, how could I be any more obvious? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she walks off into the city. Three years have passed. We're going to go to Grounded first. Grounded, you're in Walk, and the, the Harpies are with you. They are now able to fly. They're able to speak. Um, and you've set them the four down on a little rug in your house in Walk because you have something important to tell them. Okay. So I need to tell you a story. Imagine, if you will, a group of adventurers on a ship with a literal god. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You hear a voice um, uh, from coming from the kitchen. Uh, ne nearly, no, don't start without me. And uh, Belden Potts comes out uh, with a tray of tea and sets it down on uh, a little table and hands you a cup and takes one for herself. And she's got little glasses of juice. Um, I think it <laughs> grows in Glarus, probably berry juice uh, for... Yeah. Um, for the harpies who are now the equivalent of being about six years old roughly okay i've she got a question for you nick would build and pots already know about this story almost certainly you would have told her at some point after the two of you either became long-term partners or got married your choice really on where that relationship yeah. would have gone but um you probably would have told her at some point anyway yeah i mean i'd imagine they're sort of like um long-term partners like mm. even if you know because there's like 20 different religions in this setting and yeah well, probably hundreds of religions and it's probably not actually that normal to have like a formal union necessarily yeah uh and let's be honest to be even if there had been a formal union one of you probably wouldn't have known it had happened <laughs> <laughs> How dare you be so accurate? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, she's just got tea in one hand and she's just got... She stood behind you, just one hand, holding onto yours for emotional and moral support. Okay. It's the... It's... Wow. Well, it's the middle of a storm. Or maybe a storm just passed. I can't quite remember. That's besides the point. Is this the one with the but brave knight? Uh, that speaks. I like the one with the brave knight. Wow. Well, it, not quite. So, a, a fog falls, and out of the gloom comes a uh, song. Oh, boo. The And this is this one is Louis. <laughs> boo! Don't like musicals. Well, it's not a normal song. I mean, well, it's normal for you. A uh, harpy song, which enchants the crew. Oh, I don't like singing. Louis again. Huey hits Louis over the head with just just a wing, just a little couple of feathers. Um, and like, ah, stop! And they start fighting each other. Belden goes and splits the two up. And I'm just like, just... just. <laughs> well, yep. The uh, crew fall under the enchantment. And, uh, well, one adventurer thinks fast, pulls out a feather, which, uh, you know, these sometimes these things work out. It's a powerful magical item which can uh, stop a boat dead where it is. So the ship stops, uh, despite the crew wanting to sh shipwreck themselves from the song. And she calls out to the fog, asking what's going on and if uh, they'd if they'd knock it off. She, all she gets back is laughter. And after a short time, a uh, flock of harpies attack the ship. Like us? Yep. So obviously the uh, well, some of the crew are enchanted and they're helpless. The rest of the crew fight back and. Even though uh, attempts are made to drive, simply drive them off, they uh, they fight to the end, and none of the harpies survive. Oh, I don't like this story. Do you have a better one? It's an important story. Okay. Looking, uh, 
exploring the uh, outcrop the harpies are on. One of the uh, crew looks around and she um, she finds four eggs. She uh, takes, thinks about what... It three seconds longer than the other three to work out that four is the number of harpies they are. She feels a strong pang of guilt and, well, she also, she tells herself she's mulling over the decision for 30 minutes, but she, um, she'd already made it. She uh, takes the eggs in and, well, a short time later, the ship starts re- getting wrecked anyway. Somehow trigger in it and the eggs hatch and, well, she uh, already made up her mind to adopt them and adopt them she does. I'm sorry I didn't tell you this sooner, but yeah, yeah that's how I adopted you. But I thought you just laid a big egg. Tieflings are mammals, we don't lay eggs. And also, even if, even if uh, I wasn't, even if I was technically a bird in that way, I can't lay eggs. Oh. What couldn't the Atosian platypus has opinions. <laughs> I was going <laughs> to mention the platypus, but I thought maybe the, the, the harpies didn't know about the platypus. What about kittens? Hmm. Uh, so you killed arm pumps? In self defense, yeah. Make me four different. Persuasion checks, please. Oh no. Could have just told them the story of the very angry paladin again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Guess what I've got as a modifier to charisma? Zero? Yep, that's right. These are flat rolls. They're children, it won't uh, be that hard. They're your children, Ronan. it won't be that hard. The Very Angry okay. Paladin is a very fun book because uh, as the paladin slays her enemies, uh, there's holes through. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> it was written by Toadie. He, he got he, he just got a career in in children's books. Um, there's a great one about Nerdly the Nerd as well. It's very popular. <laughs> just an extremely sad looking bird in every panel. <laughs> okay, that's um, an eleven, a seven. A natural 20, and I'm going to re-roll the natural 20 dice because it's got a good vibe about it. Okay. Port, uh flat 10. Huey runs out of the house in tears. Now, you're not that worried. It's pork. Everyone looks after each other. And Belden looks at you and goes, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go talk to him. Just pats you on the shoulder forlornly and walks out. The other three looking up to you, two of them are confused. And the one that isn't confused is I, in 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 shock to all of us. Hicks, mm-hmm. Hicks goes. It doesn't really matter what happened before we were born. What matters is what happened afterwards, right? I mean, I'd like to think so, but that's what I'm telling you. It it's up to you in the end. He waddles over to you. He's you know now six years old, uh, but hasn't got the best balance out of all of the <laughs> out of all of the harpies, <laughs> um, and just sort of waddles over and hugs you. Don't worry. Yep. Mm. It'll always be our yep. mum. Mm. And at this point, Grounded starts crying. And the other two harpies come in and hug you as well. It takes a, a little while for Huey to come around to the idea. Uh, Huey's the oldest by about 25 seconds. Oh, yeah. And it take, yeah, it takes him a while. It's, it's rough for him. Of the four harpies, you've always gotten a vibe that he would have wanted to meet his biological parents the most and now he knows why he can't but it, after a year or two he comes around and the age of yeah eight or nine you know it's no difference in him at all he's just perfectly happy to be with you he just needed time to process okay we're gonna cut to scavengery where gargoyle has finished working on a project and is testing it out with the best guinea pigs um, you can think of, the Guild of Icons. Oh, okay. I think it's done. What does the project you've been working on look like? It is a large gate uh, that is incredibly heavy, but has been constructed on a platform with some wheels in uh, the workshop that Gargoyle currently is in. It's made out of kind of like twisting tree parts, almost like uh, Gargoyle wouldn't know, but um, a portal to the Emerald Forest, Mm. Uh, except interlaced between the knots of trees or like knots of wires and uh, a few crystals 
in between. Oh, sorry. Grounded is also here. Uh, she would have arrived from Wark, it being a lot easier to get to Scavengery from Wark than it is to get to, say, Karaki. Yeah, Grounded will notice that uh, Sela is wearing a roguish jacket similar to her own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, a roguish jacket. Um, she's also... and Gargoyle, I don't know how you felt about this, but there is a tattoo... She's nine, by the way, canonically at this point. There is a, a tattoo uh, on her wrist, um, and it is an inky black serpent. Do I understand what that is? Uh, it's a shape that she had dra drawn and she quite liked. Um, but you're, I suppose you have, you might have conflicted, I'm not going to tell you how you feel, but you might have conflicted feelings, because on the one hand, she's very young to be getting a tattoo, but on the other hand, she did do it herself, and it does look very good. Well, and, and also she's an, yeah, she's an artificer, so. Yeah, it's a magical tattoo that she's created herself. Just magically gave herself a cool S tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she yeah. also has with her a large uh, mechanical goat with mm -hmm. uh, very large horns, uh, which she sits atop. Yeah. And floating around her, she's got a small uh, woolly sheep. Okay. We're going to see if this works. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, gargoyle. Uh, holds onto the lever on one side of the gate and then pauses and looks to everyone in the room. So if this goes wrong, uh, we will have to go to the astral plane to retrieve the subjects. Again, I know. Ergo uh, pulls the <laughs> little thing on the lever that allows it to move in the first place. Sailor crosses then... both fingers and uh, Cotton, the little sheep, also, uh, well, crosses the little cloven hoof. <laughs> it looks very uh, good. Gargoyle yeah, just gives a thumbs up. <laughs> Gargoyle pulls the uh, bit of the lever that makes it so it can move at all and thrusts it down. There are screams from the crowd that is gathered here um, of Aulin, who they're, they're st they have a better understanding of Artifice now, but none of them can create things on the level of gargoyle and so they're always a little bit frightened whenever a gargoyle created artifice uh is is it, it's turned on for the first time to be fair many of them have learned that since childhood <laughs> yes yeah there are screams people die for cover but it actually works um a shimmering purple arcane gate gargoyle kind of just like backs away and uh, puts his arm in the way to kind of like get Sailor and the others to pull back just in case the thing that comes out of the portal isn't the guests. So we're going to cut to Ao. Ao, you're sat in the office and it's a pretty it's a pretty boring day. It's paperwork day. You hate paperwork day. Usually you just kick the paperwork under the desk. Uh, and save it for another day, but now there's not enough room under the desk and people are starting to get a little annoyed that you've not submitted any of the paperwork required to keep a business going in the last four years. And so you finally sit down to do it when in front of you, before the desk, a large purple circle <laughs> appears. How do you react to that? First of all, Gargoyle, did you tell Ao that <laughs> you were doing this? Uh, yes, I think that there okay. is a portal on the other side, like a gate that's been built, but it isn't active. It's just been lying there. Gargoyle essentially came in one day and said, don't touch this. <laughs> so you've kind of, you've had that like under a dust sheet, basically, uh, for Sorry, a while. Did you give Ao, did you give Ao a explicit instruction not to touch something? Okay, Gargoyle used reverse How many seconds did it last, said, Iris? <laughs> Oh, Gargoyle been... used reverse psychology and said to touch this immediately. There are some unusual a dents on it for where you've been like popping open bottles against it and that sort of thing. Ao looks down at the por portal. She takes a deep breath. She activates a spell tattoo on herself that casts Disguise Self. Mm -hmm. Turning herself into a human of her choice. And in this case, she turns herself into a right. She looks like a right version of herself. She takes a deep okay. breath. Okay. And she stumbles through the portal. Wait, a what? Uh, do you mean a white? Yeah, sorry, a white. Oh. Okay. Hi. 
So you make yourself look like an undead version of yourself and you stumble through the portal. Yeah. Gargoyle, you see an undead version of A.O. Dunwich stumble through the portal. Help me. Subtle spell grease. <laughs> <laughs> would a ground be able to tell if uh, would a ground be able to tell if uh, this was actually an undead? Uh well granted you're yeah, a phantom was, rogue. Yes. Yeah, this is no, this is your kind of paladin. Divine yeah, sense. Paladin. Divine sense. Okay. Yeah, you know this isn't you know this isn't undead. Um and the way your divine sense works is Shay appears right behind you and goes, This isn't undead. Yeah, I figured this is the kind of thing you should always do. Oh, I'm here now. Awesome. Shay was, Shay was <laughs> going to be turning up to this at some point. That's the best time. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you said uh, grease spell, the grease spell? Yeah. yeah, so roll me an acrobatics check, please, Ao. Yeah, uh, it's not an acrobatics check. It's a deck saving throw. No, I want you to roll me an acrobatics check. Okay. You're pretty good at those, I think. And you can't roll less than a 10, if I recall? Uh, that depends. <laughs> you said acrobatics? Yeah. Yeah, so the minimum I could roll is a uh, 17 if I take my modifiers into account. Yeah. So 17. Roll, roll it, because I want to know. Oh, did you roll less? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, 17 is actually enough. Have you seen the oh. Gene Wilder Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? <laughs> What you do is you stumble out um, and you step on this grease and you fly forwards um, till fall forwards. It looks like you're going to really injure yourself. Suddenly tuck, do a forward roll and stand up and jump up onto your feet. I dropped the spell. <laughs> and you're A.O. Dunwich as everyone remembers. Still, still extra A politician. Oh, you have no idea how long I've been planning that one. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'm gonna miss like three years. Uh, you see that gargoyle is maybe a foot taller. Uh, the crystals have gotten a bit bigger. There's a few more of them around his body, and his feathers are starting to kind of splay out a bit more. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, right. Uh, <clears throat> I, f I forgot. I have gifts. I have gifts. A Ao, of course. Uh, take takes out her top, her top hat of holding, and she pulls out four wrist-mounted slingshots and gives each one to each of Huey, Dewey, Louie, and Pinks. <laughs> you know, that's preferable to what I thought you were going to do, which was going to be give one of them the gun. The use no. of gun. No, <laughs> however, however, Ao, Ao has heard that Sailor's been taking up artifice and so Ao does give her one of the busted guns because one one of the four of them that we got was broken. Oh, Gargoyle cool. already gave her the false arguments. You're spoiling her. Oh, yeah, but I she love has to guns. fix this one. Yeah. She has to fix this one. Oh, I'm going to take this apart and make it work, I promise. Gargo looks to see if it's the uh, rifle or if it's the uh, essentially grenade launcher. <laughs> uh, this one would have been the grenade launcher. Please be incredibly careful. Of course I will. You remember the last eight times she just sort of jammed a screwdriver into a gun and gotten like plasma feedback from it. Huey, Dewey, Higgs, right, Louis, you say responsibly. Got it, says Huey and winks. So how many of the crystal dragon wormlings? No joke. How many of the crystal dragon wormlings are here? Also, probably now expecting gifts. Uh, a couple do fly down. They are no longer wormlings. Um, oh, yeah, that's, are... that's right. The, the plan was to have them set, settle here. They are young crystal dragons. There's quite a few of them nesting in the giant trees of Scavenger. Ao walks up to what one of the first ones that comes down. She puts her forehead to to its head. She she says in her th thoughts, "Hello, God sister." You get back uh, in your thoughts. It's been so long. Yeah, work's been busy. Uh, of course, it, this conversation is happening entirely telekinetically. <laughs> yeah. So no I've, one can dispute that work's been busy for Ao Dunwich. I've exactly. been. I, I take a look at these wings, and it shows you 
the full wingspan is something like 10 foot wingspan now. I've been sneaking up into the trees and angling my wings so that the sun goes straight into Gogol's office. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> yeah! It's been great. There's loads of food. Um, once, well, once we agreed not to eat the owls anyway. I, 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 I do appreciate that. The point was that they, you know, you, you, they helped raise you, not that you'd but eat they them. They look so tasty. But fine, 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 fine. So I have so, a question, Nick. Yeah. Uh, do ha- are all of the crystal dragons still the the base crystal dragon, or have any of them started changing to the other forms of gem dragon? Which they can have apparently actually. Hap- which can happen to young dragon wormlings. Apparently, yeah. They these can, are the they- these are the first crystal dragons ever and uh first gem dragons ever so they are starting to change no one has ever the only adult crystal dragon you've ever seen is the very first one that was created um but these ones are different uh the one you're Mm -hmm. talking to is actually just a crystal dragon uh Mm -hmm. young crystal dragon but there are all sorts of brilliant colors uh that you can see you can see um vibrant purples uh you know emerald you can see amethyst you can see uh sapphire that sort of thing i'm looking at the list of uh, gem dragons (laughs) um but yeah all sorts all sorts it's it's quite beautiful when they're when they're sat in the trees of scavengery because the the scavengery trees are huge these are the massive redwoods beyond the size of redwoods that are in uh on earth they look like butterflies of various colors just sort of sat in the trees so these lot have been uh I, i'm sorry to gargle these lot haven't been too much trouble have they uh, actually on the contrary they've seemed to they seem to be pretty good for the environment oh, that's that's good that being said we have been getting less rain the druids are taking care of it, but I should probably make a backup system just in case. So, uh, Cotter, write that down. <laughs> Cotter writes but, it down. Yeah, but yes, uh, this is. Congratulations on your gate. It's like when it activates, an entire plane of air becomes someone else. What? What do you call? What? I think you should call it like an airplane. <laughs> that is our great name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so you you get to sitting around uh, and you start to tell stories, as is quite common. Uh, well, Gargoyle, take take the lead on on what this sort of uh, festival is that you're. Uh, so we're walking to like there's bridges interlaced between all of the trees and Skaven Tree at like multiple different levels, uh, and as we're walking to a specific tree, Gargoyle just says you. Uh, so it's Fallow, and well, when Owlin, who are on a journey during Fallow, come back, they're expected to go to the theater and, uh, you know, give an account of what they've been up to uh, since they've been gone. So yeah. uh, everyone else has started telling stories, and I figured since you're here, maybe you want to as well. <laughs> That is that is a kind offer, but a storyteller I am not. And you are pushed onto a stage by several people and a large mechanical ram. And grounded. Oh. And grounded. Oh, oh. Whose oh, strength okay. score will oh. not be beaten. <laughs> <laughs> um so we we're going to we're going to flash back to an event that happened in the last three years where AO treading this dual life of criminal and government minister not really a dual life for many government ministers but for Ao a dual life uh, she finally through enlisting the help of the thieves and t finally gets a lead on that nefarious bastard the one that every thief hates Puce he stabbed us all in the back at least once. At least once, if not seven or eight times each. How did you get revenge, Ao? How Ao got revenge? I think in this case, the way Ao got revenge is through 
somewhat legal, somewhat heavily illegal means. Of course. <laughs> first, first of all, she was absolutely sure to pin as many crimes on him as she could get away with. She was an accomplice to many crimes, so just shifting him to the main perpetrator of those crimes, that wouldn't be so hard. And then through some, let, let's call it what it is, a bit of bribery with the judges, she got what once he was once he was sentenced. Uh, instead of having a normal punishment, Puce got a very special job. Puce now runs at un, under supervision, of course, runs administrative paperwork. For both the low and the low and high uh, par- parliaments of the city. Oh, very good. <laughs> oh, Every very bit of paperwork good. that is done eventually goes through him. Nothing but paperwork. Puce's own personal hell. Somewhere a devil is looking at and going, that's a good idea. Him, I, write that down. Write that down. <laughs> Imp is like, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but of course, in, in Ao's mind, this was just the the icing on the cake, the cherry on top. See, the point of uniting everyone against Puce wasn't, in this case, to get Puce. It was to add some. It was to add some unity into into the very divided up thieves and un, thieves and undergrounds mm. and undergrounds. Because anyone who wasn't a part of the, but, I forget what the name of the three factions were. Don't worry about but that. But of the the original three, the original three factions of the of the underground, uh, anyone who wasn't there, they just kind of they just kind of did their own thing. The, okay, here it is: the rooks, the bells, and the kellers. That's it. If really? You, if you I were, thought the original three factions of the undergrounds were uh, Sonic, Manic, and Sonny. No, <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> but but anyone who wasn't a part of those three, just although that although a lot of them like were friends, they didn't really have any organization. That was the whole point of Ao doing this in the first place, to add some unity into and to help better balance out the underworld. Because because nice. let's face it, uh, a lot a lot of those people were forced into very specific areas of the city simply because the other areas were claimed by those other factions. Yeah. So you almost created a full Thieves Guild. Mm. Not official, but there's definitely one there. T-Bolt gets to run this one, though. Yeah. I'm not doing any more paperwork. (laughs) Yeah, you've done enough guild maintenance. What does Dupree think about all of this, I wonder? Oh, I told you that there would be tomfoolery within our official systems if A.O. Dunwich was elected, and now there are criminals running through our government. Look, hey, hey, look, A.O. Dunwich had nothing to do with this. This was all Salius Monvale, a notorious criminal who has been wanted in Karaki for over a decade. And once well, I found out who Salius Monvale is. <laughs> 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 Which, by the way, is the whole reason she came up with the identity of Ao Dunwich is because she was already wanted in the city. <laughs> Gargoyle is just face palming uh, on the wings, uh-huh. uh huh. As Ao Dunwich essentially tells a group of Owlin and a lot of Owlin children about how she's establishing a thieves guild. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, next to you, Sailor looks up to you and says, "Did you really expect it to go any differently?" We have to give everyone a chance. Yeah. Well, you better go next. And she tries to push you, but doesn't succeed. <laughs> Grant intervenes. <laughs> Granted, you push Gargoyle onto the stage. Gargoyle, uh, where did you go? Hey, everyone. Well, I live here, so you probably know about some of the things I've gotten up to, like the book I wrote, Applications of Artifice, a comprehensive guide to inventing at home and in the field. Uh, Ao a- 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 immediately thinks back to the book that's on her desk, completely unopened despite being a personal gift. It is caked in dust. Uh, has several like drink, like rings where you've put cups on it. Uh, you know that I've been trying to develop some new armors. We'll find the armor of invisibility prototype at some point. <laughs> uh, 
Also exciting is the medium armor that's light enough for people to fly in. Unfortunately, I only really use heavy armor these days, but someone else might get some good use out of it. <laughs> I've been trying to make magic more secure than the dreadful system that Cantlor employed. I've been traveling around the world when I'm not here with Sela, and we've been consulting with mages to engrave the Master Scrolls onto silver. And we've been hiding and burying them across all of Atos, so that if one horrible disaster happens, all of magic is not lost. And we're going to do a flashback to how you got those scrolls when you went back to the mirror run on your own this time to retrieve the original spells of the world, the master records of the spells. Any of those destroyed and that spell is gone forever. It is a heavy weight to bear, but you felt up to it. So let's say let uh, stay home for this one. And you enter right. the mirror and you step through a mirror and you arrive in a very familiar corridor. Oh gosh, please don't be the corridor where if you touch anything you die. There's a line of statues on either side of you. Felicitous. <laughs> one day, Nick. <laughs> I almost had you. I almost had you. Almost yeah, had you. Maybe, maybe, maybe while there, you're there, you'll finally find the real Felicity. It's not the one that was made from a Beholder's Dream. Maybe I, I gotta can finally have my weapon. Guys. I gotta say, thank but heavens to Cantlaw Password Security being atrocious. It's been three years and that's also still dead. the password. <laughs> Gargoyle got you a book. You don't need a sword. <laughs> So you walk through the familiar corridor, you end in a circular room with, lined with lock boxes, um, and there is this black orb in the middle. It feels so very familiar to you, and you just want to reach out and touch it. <laughs> Remember, Carter, don't touch anything in this room especially. Isn't it bad that, by the way, I don't have the map for the mirror on open right now. I remember all of this from memory. Oh yeah, we know as well. <laughs> question, question, Gargoyle. What was the name of the uh, the artifice you made in the in your nightmare world that you said you'd make in the real one? Uh, spider. Yeah. What was the spider's name again? Spider. With a Y. Mm. <laughs> it spies on people. You did you wa oh, did you sorry, warn you Spider about it? Spider isn't with me. I can only do Damn. one homunculus at a time. Yeah. Did you did you take the sacrificial one <laughs> from the no? Nose? <laughs> did you rebuild it? Just take it on this journey. <laughs> Ruby survived. Oh yeah, Ruby did survive actually. Yeah. Um, who have you got with you, by the way? Um, uh, Cotter. Cotter. The All classic. reliable. Yeah. Remembers this area quite well. You take a right. You head to the quarry. You think probably the best bet is to go via the foreman who could open portals through the mirror run and get you to places faster. That's how you got there last time, after all. Yeah, I've brought a barrel of oil with me. Yeah, you're ready. I mean, you can always just cast grease again and again and again. But yeah, you're you're, you're ready. You've, you've brought the lube. Um, give me you a stealth check, to please, go. to get a massive barrel of lube past whatever denizens of the quarry remain. I'm gonna say that for this one, I'm going to be in stealth configuration. That's fine, yeah. I'm so honestly, I'm. I won't get disadvantage on the roll. Yeah, I'm honestly surprised anything in that quarry would have would have survived the epic battle between Silverstride and the Postman. Ah, uh, there are things. There. there are things. Seventeen stealth. Seventeen's fine. So there are these skittering insects made of brass and cogs moving around on the walls but they don't detect you as you go through and you make it to the foreman and the foreman asks have we met before uh yes uh two years ago my memory is limited oh so like uh 516 gigabytes i do not understand what that means uh i've brought some oil that is good of you did i request oil I do need oil. I don't recall requesting. 
Well, last time you asked for it, so I thought I'd get some in advance. Several years ago? Yes. It's good that I received oil before then. So your memory is limited, but do you remember where all of the Master Scrolls have been stored? Yes. If I helped with the oil, would you let me go there? Of course. Gargoyle helps with the oil in a way that cannot be worded to be described as lubing anything. Looped up and ready to go. Thank you for lubricating me. Oh, great. He's got his get up and go back. <laughs> he's he's pretty rusted up. Like at, at this point, he hadn't moved at all when you arrived. And now after you've applied some of the oil to his joints, he's able to move around again. And he pulls this massive block of mirror metal off of the wall and forms a, a portal to the reference library. Uh, before I go, I look around. How stable is the mirror run seeming? Pretty stable. Well, that's probably for the best. And then I walk through into the reference library. Mm. What do you mean is for the best? Oh, the state of the mirror run. It was falling apart last time we were here. Yes, it was. Transmutex Elena Silverstride stabilized the locks. When exactly did she do that? Three years ago. And she's left since, right? No. She is here right now. It's standing right behind you. She is in <laughs> the reference library. Gargoyle uh, turns his head around 180 degrees to see if Silverstride has noticed the portal. <laughs> she has. She's looking straight at you. Gargoyle walks through the portal. Artificer. And she, you feel there's that venom, that hatred. And also just a little bit of distaste for Artemis. Transmere text. What are you doing back? Ah. Uh, am I behind my hands, or behind my back? I use my hands to try and get Cotter to start gathering uh, Master Scrolls uh, behind sure. her. Make me a slot of hand check. You'll notice she is holding one right now. Oh, that's a 12. Mm. <laughs> She spots you. Curious little thing, these scrolls. Tell me, what's your favorite spell? You can cast a few, can't you? I can cast a few. My favorite is hard to discern. Uh, Gargoyle, but... you should you should remember because you do know this. Ao has the chain lightning scroll. Yeah, but it might include spells such as this and gurgle subtle spells hypnotic pattern very good very good hypnotic pattern requires me to make a save right uh da, 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 wisdom saving throw natural 20. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh that's just unfortunate by one uh well she has a modifier as well, but oh no no no! You can't be using magic against me! No 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 no! Fine, if you won't tell me what your favorite spell is, I'll introduce you to mine. How many hit points does Gargoyle have? Uh, Gargoyle has seventy-six hit points. She reaches for a, a scroll. She pulls it out. She says, "You know." It's wasteful to do this, because if I cast it, it'll never exist again. Oh, I think I know what spell you're holding, and I think that's rather good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it could do it. She casts power word kill. Spell magic. <laughs> dispel magic oh, is an action. Take... Counterspell could work, but dispel magic won't. Oh yeah, counterspell. That's what I meant. Blah. That's fair, then. What level? Uh, bum bum bum. But I can only do third. You can spend extra charges on that wand of counter spells. Uh, yeah, I'll use all of the charges on the wand of counter spells. Okay, ninth level. That counters power will kill, which now no longer exists. Oh, you've got your little toys. I should have expected, really. You can't do magic without them, can you? What do you do? Oh. Is the portal still open? 
Yes. Uh, okay. I try to vortex warp her through the portal. Okay. As far as I can into the other room. It's a save, right? Uh, it is a save. Well, I can't surely roll. Oh, I have res- I have advantage on saving first. Uh, I can't surely roll Constitution. a nat 20 again. Constitution, yeah, probably can't. That is a 15, which is decent, nope. but... <laughs> so you, yeah, uh, you're trying to beat a 19. And teleport her through the portal. And dispel magic on the portal. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, and the portal drops, and... Eleanor Silverstride is left in a different room in the mirror run, having an argument with the form. You have a little bit of time before she gets back. Basically, I am going to roll... um, Basically, every action you do, I'm going to roll a d20 if I roll under the number of actions you've done. She's here. So initially, I have to roll a 1, then it's 1, 2, then it's 1, 2, 3, then it's 1, 2, 3, 4, that sort of thing. All right? Okay, uh, I presume that Gargoyle has brought a mirror that is large enough for him to of go course. through. You're always and prepared. Yeah, he's going to start taking as many scrolls as he can and start pushing them into the mirror. Okay. Let me get you the number of spells that you've got to save. <laughs> Not Chain Lightning or Power Not, Word Kill. Not Chain Lightning and no longer Power Word, uh, power word Kill, no. There are... Unfortunately for the people of Nordmark, Power Word Kill has been uh, brought out of use uh, two years into the future, so sorry, you'll still have to deal with that. There are 499 spells. <laughs> How many of those do you think I gained on action? I think you can take maybe 60 each time, like just handfuls of scrolls, just taking them quickly. Yeah, just and pushing with, them and through and with into yeah. the bedroom. Every six seconds, about 60 of them, yeah. Meanwhile, it looks like the crystal maze for Sailor. And it's just sort of diving around as scrolls <laughs> fly out. Um, I told him uh, not to touch any scrolls that come through. <laughs> uh, that, so that should be about nine actions. Nine actions. So let's see when when Silverstride comes back. First of all, 12. So now it's one to two. 16. One to three. 14. 1 to 4. 12. 1 to 5. 6. <laughs> that was close. 1 to 6. 11. 1 to 7. 17. 1 to 8. 8. Can I flash of genius? <laughs> Can you flash of genius? No, she's back. Oh, oh. Uh, that's 480 spells you've saved. You've got one more round of spells to get through there. You've got about 20 in your hand right now. 19, actually, in your hands. Um, as she comes through and she goes, no, you don't. Uh, let me just check what spells she has access to to stop you. Oh, whole person. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm presuming that... Uh, I presume that as... Uh... As I'm going to be trying to hold uh, Silver Stride off, Codra is still going to be trying to uh, push scrolls through the mirror. Yeah. You basically have to pass this check to not die in the future. Uh, so, uh, hold person, I would like a wisdom saving throw, please. Wisdom saving throw. Oh, I'm not good at those at all. Oh, that's a nat one. Nat one is not an automatic fail on saving throws. What is the number? Two. Oh. <laughs> you suddenly held in place and she walks straight over to you and plucks a few scrolls out of your hand. Well, well, well. Now, what would you like Cotter to do? Because Cotter is still free-flowing. Technically acts on its own, but... Hitting her would hardly do anything. Way too much HP. Probably wouldn't even reach the AC. But, but it is concentration. Cotter has... It is. Cutter, though, has a ranged attack that uses force called Force Strike. That's Would true. Cutter be able to uh, Force Strike the scrolls away from her? Sure. Yeah. Roll me an attack. 21. 21. 
That hits. Now let me roll to see if we destroy a scroll in the process. You're okay. I rolled above a 10. Uh, do your damage and I'll do a concentration check. Oh, well, that was in that one. Whole person oh, drops. Uh, six damage. <laughs> six damage. The damage doesn't matter. The fact that concentration is broken does. Um, you are now free to move out of there. She's holding two scrolls, and I'm going to randomly determine what they are. It's up yeah, to you whether you want to try and get them back. Cone of cold and calm emotions. Uh, okay, um, gang. If if we wanted to save one of these spells, definitely calm emotions. Yeah. It has it has utility and therapy. Yeah, but oh, it, actually, it, wait. Maybe I can save both. It is good to remember that they're, on, they're only lost permanently if she casts them. Her having them doesn't mean they're gone. Can I enlarge uh, Eleanor Silverstride so that the scrolls fall through the arms or hands she's holding them in? <laughs> Go on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Is there a save? <laughs> uh, if it's an unwilling creature, there's a constitution save. Well, let's see what happens. Seven... Yep, she grows. So she goes boom, 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 and drops the scrolls. You're able to grab them and you can run through that portal. And she's, Have you got them all? She, Yep, you've got them all. She reaches out after you as you run through the portal with a grapple check. Make me an acrobatics check. No athletics check to avoid this one because you are getting out of there. Oh no, you can go for athletics actually because that would be you pulling away, right? And also the mantle core gives me proficiency in athletics. You then use athletics. Look at the bright side. Now she's too large to follow you through the mirror. Mm. Silver so uh, silver strides hot. Nineteen beats the twelve I rolled. She reaches out to grab you. Oh she has advantage. Hold on, let me roll again. Nat twenty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Four, and this is the funny part, a nineteen. Wizards aren't best known for their strength. So you know what happens when you tie uh, in a in a contest? Status quo, and you, the status quo is you're not grappled. Uh, Gargoyle quickly gets some uh, some paint and like slathers it over the mirror. <laughs> yeah, so she can't follow you. You just thud against I mean, the inside of the mirror. She probably couldn't follow me anyway because she'd need to know where I'm going, but. <laughs> Yeah, true, true. I mean, there's probably magic that'll do, do that, but that was a good idea. Well done, you're back with all of the scrolls, except Power Word Kill, which no longer exists in the world. And Chain Lightning. And Chain Lightning, which is, you know, it exists, but yeah. So, yeah, that's the terrifying experience I had returning to the Mirror Run. Yeah. And that's great. And you, you get some confused applause from the Owlin who don't really understand the stakes of what's going on. Um, the rest of the party are probably a little bit more impressed. I just I've look at the confused Owlin and then I try to... Go magic! <laughs> Very good. Wait, uh, so is a Silver Strider still, still giant? No, because that's kind of scary. No, that's a concentration spell. Okay. We are going to cut to Shay, who over time has been, over the last three or four years, <clears throat> has been watching Hannah grow up gradually. Not much, a few years, but there's change enough. She's been helping out locally in the best way she can, <clears throat> rescuing cats that are stuck up trees and killing particularly large rats in the basement of inns, that sort of thing. You know, your classic first level adventurer sort of thing. She's got a few scratches and a few scars. Uh, there's a particularly nasty bite mark for when she went up against a wolf she wasn't particularly well equipped for, but survived with a little bit of help from the god watching over her. And yeah, you've just sort of, you, you've kept a distance, but you've been just keeping an eye on her. You put a lot of effort into her well-being. And you don't want to see that go to waste. So you've been nudging her slightly off of the most dangerous parts. But very, very slight. Just like, you know, she takes a contract that she's not got enough information on and it turns out it's bandits or something. And it's like, mm-mm, mm-mm, <laughs> mm-mm, no, no, no. We're going to have those bandits maybe just not 
be at home <laughs> when she gets there and that sort of thing. Just to give her a, an easier start. Um, I think one of the immediate things I do nudge her into, though, is going to Kabraki at some juncture and yeah. joining the Guild of Icons. Yeah, you I against presume, your, against your I better judgment. There's, yeah, I presume there's no objections from from the Low Marshal and the head of the Guild of Icons on this on this front. Uh, I think the best way I say this played out is when Hannah walked through the the door of the Guild of Icons, Ao initially thought that she was Shay, who at this point probably had Ao probably hadn't seen for about a year. But after some initial confusion is dispelled, how old is Han? Uh so Shay has probably like when you met her was probably around 18 to 20, but had frozen years weirdly. Anna at this juncture though, because of the way that reality is built, probably only like 15 at oldest. Like Anne's also like probably humor supposed to change me. <laughs> okay, I just need a, a good reference on her age. Like potential Guild of Icons adventurer age. Yeah, okay. yeah and I'll carry in fear there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that probably is what at least early on Ale because she is about the age where she sh should probably start. She would probably start doing proper adventuring, like she's getting close to that age. So probably for the first year or so after they met, she would probably have uh, Hannah wor working with basically babysitting those kids who just spend way too much time getting into danger. Which probably suits Hannah just fine, especially seeing as occasionally books have been showing up that have been teaching her sword play and magic in equal measure yeah and once once she once she got once she is a little bit older and has more of a handle on things ale probably would have uh started moving her to more proper adventuring probably under either under the firethorn or uh, no under alana specifically under alana oh god <laughs> why would you do such a horrible thing what did I do to you, A.O. Dunwich? <laughs> I mean, I have Alana under my employ, and what, 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 what better way? What better way to use her? This is going to be really talent. confusing for Alana. <laughs> I mean, as far as Alana is concerned, Alana is just babysitting a new adventurer who, who's now working for the guild full time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, welcome to the Guild of Icons, uh, Hannah. Well, the adventure program, but it's basically the same thing, except the pay's worse. I think there's I think one more because... thing I need to do, though. Yeah. There's one more thing I actually need to do as Shay. I think at a certain point there's going to be some canon retconning just so that Shay can ease transition into proper godhood. So things start to alter a little. Uh, memory start to change a little. Um, if happens. The, the long and short of the plan for Shay is mm. rewrite a bit of history so that she can fade out gracefully, so that there's no yeah. weird paradoxes and no broken memories. And then do the very smart thing of looking at Zephos and going you need to be back there. Well, I don't know, Think, old girl. You should, well, you can be in both places at once. Like, I'm here and I'm probably always going to have you next to me, but I think there needs to be plenty more toys down there for adventurers to look after. Pretty sure you can do some heroics down there. Well, all right then. I suppose. We'll still go well, on adventures sometimes, well. right? Of course. No, that, but that won't be so I bad. I imagine it's going to be a bit I imagine it's going to be a bit more more bureaucratic up here, especially with that thing down there, just looking vaguely in the hole in reality where the machine god is. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to what that's going to be spitting out. Okay, we will do our ending scene, which is everyone returning to the Guild of Icons in Karaki after um, after spending time with Gargo. Now a lot easier thanks to the invention of airplanes. Mm. <laughs> I hate it. Nothing <laughs> confused with the elemental plane of air, of course. No. Mm. Aura tracks bland that someone's inherited. 
That's an airplane. I hate it. Anyway, hate you're it. back at the guild. How would you like to say goodbye? Hmm. This is a hard one. I think I'm going to manifest to each of the guild to each of the icon members at some point, like individually, just to properly say goodbye. Um, I think AO just gets a fist bump. I think that's probably probably all that AO wants at this juncture. <laughs> Something you do notice when you visit AO is AO is is kind of flipping a coin in between her fingers. And every single time the coin turns around to heads, there's a different face on it. Each of the faces being one of the ones she has seen at you as at one point or another. It. It's some, it's it's something a AO carries around to remember you by. I approve. Keep making you good decisions, AO. I like it when you make good decisions. Start I, making I, good decisions, AO. I, <laughs> I, I, we both know I can't promise that, but I can certainly try. Uh, Grounded also gets like a visit from Shay at some point. Generally, just you know to make sure that Grand's okay, that his adopted daughter is doing well, and to assure him that everything is going to be okay. Eventually, on aggregate, stuff's going to get better. Nice. And then finally to Grounded, just to also point out the same and to thank her for choosing Paladin. That it's it's the it's the oddest thing, but it's it's very appreciated. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, I stabbed you in that in the back that one time. By the way, it's fine. It happens. The important things we try to get better. Ao didn't yep, apologize for poisoning true. the entire room. I did not. I am innocent of that. <laughs> oh yeah, can actually can you do me a favor. I can try. I believe this is what's called a miracle, though, at this juncture. Yes. Grounded picks up a small gem with a hack hint trapped inside it. Could you just make sure this ends up somewhere where no one's going to find it? I'm just crushing it and making it vanish somewhere else. <laughs> Can't yep. guarantee it's not going to come back. These things do have a horrible way of doing things like that. Grounded so and Gargoyle, we're... how do you say goodbye? So, we've got differing projects, I imagine. I mean, Skaven Tree isn't so far away from Warp, so... If you ever need anything, although maybe you won't, I—I I never took the infusion off of your crossbow. Hey, I mean, uh, you can visit Walk anytime. I mean, it's pretty easy to get to um, if you uh, if you can fly. I mean, you can come uh, the way I do with all the traps, but I'm not entirely sure you'd be able to get past them. I think before we set off to get back to our own business. AO might need help with anything. Just small quest. Probably, probably six sessions. Six sessions. No more. I get, I get you. God damn it. And finally, AO. Oh no, I haven't done Grounded. Grounded. How do you say goodbye to everyone? <laughs> Sorry, Grounded. So, yeah. Yeah. I think it's uh, been great working with you I mean if you ever want to come by uh, Alaris um, you know you know. well you know our walk is it's uh, it's the middle one the uh, it's just the it's just a it. short it's just a short walk away from Gargoyle's place yep I mean, maybe a death you... saving throw away eh? <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> you know, Gargoyle's yeah, death players I mean, are prepared to do that <laughs> I don't think you can. I don't think you can fly, but yep. If you uh, let me know you're coming, I can uh, always let you um, pass the traps. I mean, they don't have keys or anything, but I know how to. Get, I know how to get through them mostly. It depends who, who updated them last. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you're all welcome to. Uh, you're all welcome to come. You know, I mean. There, well, next year I'm going to be competing in the next uh, shooting tournament. If you want to come see that. And finally, Ayo, how do you say goodbye? Oh, uh, like Robert Memorial Contest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ayo looks at the people she calls her friends. She look. She thinks back to. She thinks back to all the memories she had of them, the fights she had alongside them. The moments that they shared, laughing, fighting, 
she takes a moment to compose herself. She looks up at both of them and says, you're both fired. Hey, nice. But we're contractors. Uh, I know, it just it feels so nice to say that. It, it's not re- it's not really <laughs> goodbye, is it? Ao says, it, taking the archway that that got, that uh, gar- uh, gargoyle had installed in the Guild of Icons <laughs> HQ. Mm. Well, we gargoyle. Have, we, uh, as we say, and walk. Happy landings. Yeah. Mm. Gargoyle just extends his wings outwards and then uh, pulls the two of them in for a hug. Very nice. <laughs> And we're going to uh, end there. I have I have one more thing that I'd one like more, to do now. On. Once grounded in gargoyle leaves, Ao sits down. She throws a random coin at a clock and it starts ticking. Tick, tock, tick, tock. She yells, okay, bring them in. And four adventurers, four brand new adventurers are brought in. Well, three brand new ones and the Firethorn, who is currently in charge of this slot. Ao looks down at the pa- at the papers below her, multiple jobs, seen there waiting. She knows this one. She knows this one, a nostalgic one. Some gnolls have taken up residence near town and been they've been raiding the village here and there. She goes, All right then. So who are you, Lot? <laughs> Very good. And we fade to black there. And open to one final scene. Shay, you sense something wrong, deeply wrong in the astral plane where you've made your home. And you're pulled to the material, through the air, upwards, into the clouds, to the great sky city of Cloudwell and its Castile Angelus, where you find a city making ready for war huge machines, size that you've never seen before, each made of brilliant white metal. And a weapon, looking a little like the guns you've seen Gargoyle use before, but the size of a mountain being built into the underside of the city. And as you draw closer, you feel that spike in your mind again. And this time, the clicking sound in your head is almost laughing, mocking. It says, all will bow down to the machine. And that is where we end. Good night, everyone. Happy birthday, Nick. God damn it. Happy birthday. <laughs>